So, I've been incredibly busy lately, taking on a double ascension recently, which is two mega builds put into one. But before I show you guys what we've been doing over there, let me show you guys a little bit about the project that we just finalized over on the other side of the world. And while we're on our way over there, I have completely blacked out the nether hub, which I think looks absolutely amazing. Check it out with shaders on real quick. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? I feel like the chandelier just really pops now. We will be getting rid of the toys for the wardens, but I want to redesign the chains that hold up the, the cages. If you guys have any ideas for that, let me know. But let's head on over to the Skulklands now. Welcome to the very beginning of the Skulklands. You guys already know of the mob boss, which is this castle right behind me here with the elder dragon that started the Skulklands. But... The newest addition to this area is going to be our concrete factory. I absolutely love this build. I think it's a really cool depiction of dystopian style, rundown factory that was long forgotten, but has a refurbished inside. So let me show you guys a little bit more of what I'm talking about here. So not only do we have the crane up overhead that I wanted to make kind of look rusty and uh, overgrown, but it also has this crate that has fallen off, destroyed a massive part of the fence, crushed this guy over here, and has a little bit of life inside of here, which will tie into another ascension later on down the road. And for those of you guys who may be new around here, when every time I say Ascension, it basically means a project for you guys, mainly the Twitch supporters and stuff like that. You guys can utilize your channel points just by watching the stream in order for me to build you something really cool. So we have ourselves a little bit of a freight train here with essentially taking it over. If you know anything about Essentially's Lord, she's the goddess of thieves around here. She's got her own build. Uh, I'll see if I can link something into the video so you guys could check that out if you guys want to know why she's stealing the train. But... This is my very first freight train I've ever built, so that was an exciting little thing. We have some explorers walking around, a little bit of a closer view of the crane right here. And I'll even give you guys another little view from up here as well, so you guys can get a little bit of a better look at the crane. I absolutely love this crane. I wanted to make it look as rusty as possible and a little bit more broken down. We got a little like person on the very end there, but wanted to create a natural gradient, which I think turned out really well. And of course, our train is also pulling along a bunch of gravel and sand so we can make the components for making concrete powder. We got ourselves a little uh, cheeky little door right here with a little window. And we have a couple little oars that are being towed around from the actual train and stuff like that that lead over towards the vats. So let me show you guys a little bit of this vats right here. This is like a toxic pool. So this has been long abandoned for many years. So... Definitely don't want to be in here. There's definitely aliens and little slimes. And we have a little bit of a, you know, if you guys know about this individual, let me know in the comment section down below and what their ascension is going to be in the future. Looking at it from this side, we have ourselves one of those retro hanging signs. So I also wanted to make like something like a Pepsi or Cola like sign where this thing actually looks really nice at night. I'll have to show you guys what this looks like at night. And then we have a little bit of the city skylines right here. This is supposed to be the crane and everything like that. It's supposed to be like a cityscape right here. But while we're up here, I may as well show you guys a little bit of the giant conveyor belt that's kicking off all the sand and gravel into a giant pile over here. And a little bit of the roof if you guys want a little bit of a closer look. I used a lot of candles. I feel like candles are fantastic for lighting up anything because... You can get a bunch of varieties of different candles for different colors and all that kind of stuff that actually you don't even see it from up high. You probably don't even notice we have blue candles everywhere that's lighting up the skulk lands. But let's go a little bit inside of the factory so I can show you guys a little bit of that. So stepping on the inside of the factory here, I can show you guys a little bit of what we got going on here. It's a little bit more refurbished. We try to put as much of a, a cluttered up wall as we possibly can in a working staircase. Yeah, it's a working staircase. It's got a hard hat. It means it's got an occupation. Anyways, we have ourselves a big uh, bamboo farm here. Actually, one of my first bamboo farms I have in the world, besides the one out in the city, which is really, really nice to do. And probably one of my favorite floors I've ever designed. Absolutely love this floor. Incredibly expensive if you know any about the resources I've gone into this thing. So, love that. Over here, we have ourselves a kelp farm cactus farm and a dripstone farm that is so incredibly slow we hardly ever get dripstone from it so I'll, I'll actually be surprised by checking this thing if we even have dripstone in here yeah nothing new for dripstone this is all old dripstone so that was that was farmed months ago so i guess i'm just kind of waiting for that stuff to grow anyways 
There's, we also catch like a really nice like sunset right, really, right here. This is really, really cool. This area right here, when I get my hands on to the crafter in 1.21, which I can't wait when that actually happens, I want to actually be auto crafting like bamboo blocks and everything like that and have the crafter kicking it out into like storage columns out here in the center. I think that'd be really, really cool to do. But it's nighttime now, so let's go check out these signs on the outside. And there you have it. I think they look much better at night. Take a look at that. So with shaders, they obviously looks incredible here, but you can see how they kind of pop out and you guys can see a little bit more of the vision a lot better now, which is super nice. And I'll give you guys a little bit of a look of this. I don't know how Twitch is going to pick this up. And by Twitch, I mean YouTube because of all, all the stuff, but this is a little bit of it at night. But let's go back inside of the build now. And we're back to where we left off on the inside here. So coming in through this uh, archway right here, we have ourselves. I like I like how open this is. I know it's going to fill up over time, so be patient. We'll put more and more farms in here. I've got a lot of really cool stuff that we're going to jam pack into here. We have ourselves a lava farm, which is uh, actually incredible. Where's this guy at? Hello? <laughs> Get out of there, dude. Uh, we have ourselves a whole lava farm right here. This thing is actually a lot faster than I ever anticipated. Uh, didn't know lava actually collected this quick, but I've pretty much filled up every single one of these barrels with lava. So we are set on lava. This cocoa bean farm may look small, but it's about 2000 per harvest, even after um, replanting because let me see if I can get behind here. There's actually an other side of this thing. So we used up both sides. So back here, you, you, you guys can see that we've got ourselves all the cocoa beans back here as well. So we get about 2,000 cocoa beans per harvest, and then they all just automatically get collected right inside of this little chamber right here, which is super nice. And then this right here, this is where the magic happens. This is our concrete farm. This is based off of a Rayworks farm, but... The only difference is I don't duplicate TNT, so I had to work on a little bit of a workaround system. So I have this whole thing going out, out here to create, whoops, <laughs> not to create whoops, but to uh, to create a little bit of a clock right here that will kind of go around and around. That way I can activate these dispensers. The TNT shoots out, lands on the obsidian platform down below, and then blows that up which I think is really cool. So let's run that so I can show you guys what it looks like. Now to see if I remember how to turn this thing on and stop looking at my totem. Stop it. Stop it. I know you're looking at my totem. Anyways, I flick this lever on and then I click this button right here that will activate the TNT. And then I just sit here. Let me put my chest plate on. And I basically do this to the point where we start getting tons and tons of concrete. And over here, you'll see that as I feed in concrete from above, I'm actually pushing the concrete into the TNT as the dispenser that is on a loop and a little bit of a timer dispenses the TNT, giving us about 16 plus concrete for every TNT that we use. And in order to just shut it off, all I gotta do is click that lever right there. And then we should see it turn off here relatively. Yeah, there it goes. Uh, but I should also cover that I built all this for Heyman, who is the god of concrete himself. He's looking sick over there. And then we got Miss May over here that's also watching the TNT and stuff like that. But pretty cool device. And I have to mention, I absolutely love how it looks from over here at the iron farm. You can see the factory out in the distance there with the giant smokestack. So let's take a little bit of a better look at that smoke because I put a lot of hard work into that smoke. So this is probably the best angle that we can get a look at at the smoke. I basically wanted to bring the smoke up and then make it look like it's being wafted off to the side, like kind of like the wind is coming in through here. But I also have little bits and pieces of the smoke that are starting to come out of the smokestacks through massive holes and stuff like that. But how I did this was utilizing a series of glass and glass paints. For those of you guys who are probably wondering, it is a metric ton of glass panes and it took a very very long time in order to make this happen probably about three four hours in order to make all the smoke if not more but yeah it's just a combination of glass panes with uh with bl glass blocks and then as we make our way a little bit closer to the actual smoke right here i started incorporating some other colors 
You'll even notice that I even got a little bit of green, a little bit of white, a little bit of gray. Just to kind of bring out the smoke there a little bit to make it look really, really fancy and really, really nice. So I absolutely love the way that the smoke turned out. I also really love the way that this clock turned out. So this clock actually is the exact same time that I start and end like basically is when I start my live stream is at noon Pacific Standard Time or 3 Eastern Standard Time, which I thought was like the perfect timing for our clock. Also, three o'clock at night is witching hour. So also cool, cool. Uh, but yeah, we just incorporated it a little bit of uh, mushroom stems and stuff like that. And I keep saying we and I apologize because I know how confusing it is. This is a single player world, but I only say we because I live stream so often that it almost feels like a collaborative, a collaborative, a collaborative, collab, collaborative, you know what I mean, effort, multiple people effort, there it is, anyways, love that, absolutely gorgeous, but enough of that, if you guys like that build, please leave a like, leave a comment on what you guys like about that build the most, because now I got to get ready to start building up a little bit of a massive ascension. And I want to show you guys briefly what that ascension is going to look like. Because it's going to be a double ascension with a really cool concept. With some incredibly rich blocks that you guys have never seen me use before. Because they are expensive. So let's grab a few things and let's head on over there. And one of those resources that we're going to need for this build is going to be right here, part of the clerics. And I also need to repair my elytra. Actually, perfect timing. Whoa. Uh, so that resource is actually going to be lapis itself. I want to build a massive build incorporating a bunch of lapis blocks. So I've been basically farming up all these lapis blocks, which unfortunately I don't think is going to get me very far with this project. And to put things into a little bit of perspective on how many resources this project's going to take is I was at 1.4 million villager trades and I've done 35,000 more villager trades since I started this project. So, yeah. Now, this ascension is a little bit of ways away, but I think it's linked up perfectly to the nether hub. So let me show you guys a little bit about this. Uh, we got a little bit of shaders because I think that looks absolutely awesome with shaders. But we're going to have to come all the way down here. We're going to have to go past the Zopa's build, the God of Light. And we're going to have to go all the way across here. So this is probably where I'm going to be linking up my, uh, my nether tunnel over here. And I've got my portal set up way over here. So I don't know when we'll be connecting this to the hub. But it's a decent ways away. It's not too bad, though. But if we go through here, I can explain to you why I've chosen the location we've chosen. So, yeah, that's the portal we have over there. And you guys have probably already realized that this is the flower forest. So I needed to have the flower forest because our next up and coming mega build is going to be focused after bees, flowers, photosynthesis, all that type of stuff. But that's not all. But it's also going to be focused around the king of freaks, which is going to be spiders as well. It's going to be a bug battle between spiders and bees. But I have my own little bit of a twist here. So you guys will see how this develops over here. So we have a little bit of a web down here. We have our bridge. And I can show you guys snippets in the next episode on how we got up to this part of the build. But right now, I'm kind of just laying out the fundamentals of the build so I can have a little bit of a guideline. Remember, I don't use Limatica. I don't use anything to help me build things. So a lot of the time, I'm freehanding these builds where having a little bit of a guideline so I can work some stuff out before they become a problem is actually a pretty big deal. But I hope you guys are as excited for this project as I am. If you guys want to follow along, you guys can do that on Twitch. I start every single day at noon Pacific Standard Time, like I've said. If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like. It would help out the channel greatly. Uh, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye.